Today I'm going to share with you the epistle lesson for this week. The lesson is taken from the book of Galatians, chapter 5, verses 13 through 25. And what an appropriate text for this week before, a week off, Independence Day. Galatians 5, verse 13, time of 190 in the Pew Bible. And it should be on in your uh, on the screen. Paul writes, For you were called to freedom, brothers and sisters. Only do not use your freedom as an opportunity for self-indulgence, but through love become slaves to one another. For the whole law is summed up in a single command. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. If, however, you bite and devour one another, take care that you are not consumed. Live by the Spirit, I say. Do not gratify the desires of the flesh. For what the flesh desires is opposed to the Spirit. What the Spirit desires is opposed to the flesh. For these are opposed to each other to prevent you from doing what you want. But if you are led by the Spirit, you're not subject to the law. Now the works of the flesh are obvious, fornication, Purity, licentiousness, adultery, sorcery, enmities, strife, jealousy, anger, quarrels, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, arousing, and things like these. I am warning you, as I warned you before, those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God. By contrast, the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness. Gentleness and self-control. There is no law against those things. And those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh with its passions and desires. If we live by the Spirit, let us also be guided by the Spirit. The Word of God for us, the people of God. Let's pray for you, friends. Lord, thank you for this great day in the life of the church. Father, for us having this opportunity to be here for just a few minutes and expand upon your word. This text from the book of Galatians is powerful. Lord, may it be, may it be offered to the people and to the preacher the ways that they need to hear it. <coughs> These things we ask in Christ's name. Amen. Some of the young ones I don't remember, but Roger Staubach took. Cowboys at the Super Bowl a few times, but Super Bowl number six, he won. The Cowboys won. I didn't like that, but they did. He was not real happy about the way that went. As a matter of fact, as he's being a quarterback, he was a little bit frustrated by that. Because you see, Coach Landry, remember Tom Landry with the, with the long top coat and the hat? I don't know if you remember that. Coach Tom Landry called every player. He sent in every play from the sideline. And Staubach began to think to himself, well, you know, I'm not going to run this team myself. What's the deal with him sending in every play? He knew Tom Landry had a genius mind, which he did. We all know that. But only in emergency situations was Staubach allowed to call his own plays. He had a decision to make. Would he allow pride to rule his life and ignore his coach, making him the star? Or would he listen to the coach and do what the coach wanted to do? Starbuck later said, I faced up to the issue. Once I learned to listen, there was harmony, fulfillment, and freedom. On this Sunday before July the 4th, we are reminded of a state of freedom. Like Frank prayed a few minutes ago, isn't it wonderful that we can come to this place and enjoy the freedom that we have to drop to our knees or stand to our feet and sing the songs that God has given us? Isn't it great? But some people do not have that opportunity. They don't know what it really means to have that kind of freedom. <coughs> I'm grateful we do. From the Declaration of Independence in 1776, we hear these words. We hold these truths to be self-evident 
that all men, now women, are, all have always been, are created equal. That they are endowed by their Creator with certain unalienable rights. That among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. 3,000 years ago, Thomas Jefferson signed that Declaration of Independence. At that time, the Hebrew people were suffering from bondage. They were struggling. And God sent a man named Moses. Remember? And Moses went to Pharaoh and said, Set my people free. And Pharaoh said, I can't do it. And God said, Well, I can. And he did. A thousand years later, the people were again oppressed. They were again under Roman rule and concentration. They were oppressed. Didn't really know what to do. And God sent another man. Jesus announced in that first sermon that he preached that he'd been anointed by the Holy Spirit to bring good news to the poor, to release the captives and to let the oppressed go free. That same Jesus this morning, dear friends, the one that we love and we trust so much, is still doing the same thing over and over again in our lives, day after day after day. This same rescuing Jesus continues to fill us to overflowing in our lives. I'm so grateful this morning that the Apostle Paul had the ability to start churches, but not only to start churches, but the Apostle Paul had the ability to instruct his churches. In today's text, Paul addresses the notion of freedom. He's talking about spiritual. And what Paul tells the Galatians and what he tells us is that yes, we are free in Christ with a true spiritual freedom, but that freedom does not mean that we can have a license or a pass for doing wrong. That's not what it means. We've been set free for a purpose. The leading of the Holy Spirit in our lives, we practice true freedom. You see, there were groups going around at that time read that text, chapter 5, the first few verses before it gets to 13, there were some people going around that time that thought they were pushing their holier than thou laws. They were trying to get the Galatians to think that in addition to faith in Christ, now you had to also keep the law of demands in order to be saved. They carried around their circumcision parties. I'm glad we couldn't stop for that. Dietary laws. I'm glad we could stop with that too. <laughs> All those Sabbath laws, you know, you can't do anything on the Sabbath, you can't do no work, you can't get your donkey out of the ditch, whatever. And some people were gravitating to that. Some folks, some of those relations apparently, were gravitating to that kind of theology. But Paul said this. It's a trap. Say no to it. Friends, you are free. You are free indeed and counted righteous and forgiven an heir of eternal life because of that perfect Savior that we love and we trust. That's what makes us true. That's what gives us real freedom is that Savior that we know and we trust. Don't let her ever let anyone tell you Freedom to be taken away from you. Now, some freedom we might need to take away from people. But don't look to yourself or your performance to judge how you stand with God because you will never measure up. We'll never measure up. And if you think you do, you're deceiving yourself. Because this freedom that God gives us comes through a Savior that died on the cross for us. That's that second step of grace. That justification just for us. That's why it's true. That's why it's real. A great 
great preacher named Brent Craddock. I, I like to read a lot of his stories. They're old, tiny stories, but he's a great author to read. I enjoy reading his stories. He said he served a church in Tennessee, and at that church on Sunday mornings, a little girl, six, seven-year-old girl would come, and she would be a part of Sunday school. Her parents would bring her every Sunday. They had a circle drive in that church, and so it was a great place for the parents to drop her off, and she'd go into Sunday school, and, and, and they'd come back and pick her up. Everyone in town knew what was going on on Saturday nights. They knew that those parents were throwing wild parties, they was carousing, they was drinking, they was all kinds of rough stuff going on. They knew that. Everybody down knew that. That little girl came every Sunday morning. She'd sit on the front pew every Sunday morning and she waited on God. One Sunday morning, Dr. Craddock said that he looked out and down the aisle of the church walked this young, beautiful little girl had two friends with her. After the service, he questioned her, and she said, that's my mom and dad. They found me at the church. Fred Craddock asked those parents, why now? What helped you to make your decision? And this is what he told them. This is what they told them. He said, last night, we were having this wonderful party, and things got a little rough. Things got a little wild. There was too much stuff going on. He said, and I looked up the steps, and there was my little daughter walking down the steps. And she saw the boy eating and drinking, and so she said this, can I ask a blessing for y'all? And she prayed, God is great, God is good. Let us thank you. And they said, we're here this morning because we understand now. We understand. We thought it was another way that we were supposed to be walking. We thought if we invited those popular people to our parties, the bosses of the community, the status quo kind of folk, we thought that everything would be just fine. He said, we realize now, we realize now that we've got to let Christ live in our lives if there's a change for us. And they said this. We now understand true freedom. We know what true freedom is. I'm not off the hook this morning. Let me tell you, you're not off the hook this morning because I'm going back to this fruit bowl, okay? Because Paul in this stop was talking about freedom. Paul said, okay, here's what you need to do, but now I'm going to tell you, I want to show you a more excellent way. I want to give you a more excellent way that you're supposed to live. Paul said, by contrast, by contrast, these are the fruits of the Spirit. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, gentleness, self-control. to really understand what it means to be free. Understand what God's asking us to do. He's asking us to leave the place, this place today and live by those virtues. He's saying that the law, the law is fine. Jesus didn't come to abolish the law, but that others might be saved through it. today, we can leave and practice those fruits of the Spirit. And God will take our lives, He'll take our little feeble efforts, and He'll turn things into wonderful situations. And that, my friends, is real freedom. That is real freedom. Freedom to love, freedom to be faithful, freedom to be patient. Let me tell you, I gotta work on all of them, and maybe you do too. Let's pray. Lord, what time is this, such as this, God, today?
to be in your house and found upon your word. Thank you, God, for the privilege that we've had to do that this morning. Start with me. Start with me and help me to hear that text afresh and anew. Galatians 5, 23 through 25. Help me to hear it again, God. Help me, Lord, to understand what true invitation means and how invitation is an invitation of freedom. Walk with us and talk with us, we pray, this day and the days ahead. In Jesus' name. Here before I, before I finish, I want to say one more thing. As I painted that picture of, of a little girl and the two parents walking down the aisle in front, Preacher Craddock said, What helped you make a decision? At the end of the church service, he had done like he usually does. He offered that invitation to Christian discipleship. I would be remiss today if I did not offer. When you solely, wholeheartedly give your life over to Jesus Christ, I promise you things change. They change. You see things in a different light. I don't know, I, I don't know your situation this morning. But I do and I know this. There is an invitation for you in your pew or at the front. I'll pray with you. We'll send you on your way. You will have a new life and new